Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing my wrap up video and I really needed to film this because I'm getting a lot of books kind of built up and I knew that if I didn't film this soon I was going to have too many books to put all in one video. So we are just going to film it today. And some of these books I've already talked about in like my mid-year book freak out tag and things like that. So I won't get too detailed with some of these books, especially this first one because this was in the mid-year book freak out tag. And um, but I do want to still talk about them just so you guys kind of have all these videos with all the books that I've read kind of like in order if that makes sense. So I'm going to start with the first book that I read since my last wrap-up video, and that is Heart of the Sun Warrior. This is the second book. Um, Daughter of the Moon Goddess was the first one, which I gave four stars. This is the second one, and I believe this is just going to be a duology. This book I gave two stars, sadly. I was not happy with this book. I found this book to be incredibly boring, sadly, and the main character was absolutely insufferable. I loved her in the first book. She was great. I loved kind of seeing her arc and her growth. But in this book, she started to become a little bit arrogant. She started to kind of push herself into every situation. She had like this savior complex and she wanted to save everybody all the time. And she always got herself into every situation. And even sometimes it made situations worse but she just thought that she could fix everything all the time and it started getting so frustrating and there was also a love triangle in this series and the love triangle is actually okay in the first book but this book it just got frustrating because it just went on and on and on and on and on and she just could not pick who she wanted to be with and it started to almost feel like she was leading these characters on and it was becoming very rude to a point and I feel like love triangles are okay but when they become almost like mean to the two people that you know, are into her, it's frustrating. And that's definitely what happened with this book. I kind of felt like these guys just needed to move on because at that point it was just like, girl, like you're being kind of mean to them. So I don't know. I gave this book two stars. I wasn't a huge fan of it, sadly. I really liked the first book and I just wish this book was good because the series would have been great if I liked this book, but I just did not. So two stars for this one, sadly. So the next book that I read is Art Matters by Neil Gaiman. I actually got this book for Elena for Christmas and she's like a major artist. She loves art and so I thought this would be a great book to kind of talk about why art matters and creativity matters and why you know it's important to work on your skills and all that kind of thing and this book was actually really good I really like this now as we know Neil Gaiman is like a king and the art in this is really good the art is done by Chris Riddell which he's a really really fun artist as well and this was just a fun like little quick read I gave it four stars I wouldn't say it's like a five star like epic life-changing read but I could see this being a five stars for somebody that's like maybe younger in high school or middle school and I think it just gives a lot of like interesting life perspective and things like that and it makes you more confident in your art and making mistakes and trying to get better and all that kind of thing and it's just it was a fun little read and I really really like it. I still hope that Elena decides to read this one day um, but I definitely recommend it if you have like an artistic child because it's definitely written for a younger age range but obviously adults can read it as well um, and I just love Neil Gaiman. He's a great great writer and he has lots of good advice and things like that so this was great. Four stars. The next book I read was Archer's Voice. This was also in my mid-year book freakout tag a lot because I love this book. Loved it. If you want a really sweet romance and you are looking for something that's just going to be like the cutest thing you've ever read in your life, this is the book that you need to read. I know this is like an older book and I literally, like I've seen it around but I was just kind of like, eh, like I don't know, like I don't need to read it. I just didn't really know much about it and I actually read this on my Kindle and I loved it so much that I went on Amazon and I bought it like physically because I loved it that much. This is probably one of my all-time favorite romances that I've ever read. I have like a good like handful of romances that I absolutely love which I think I want to make a video about that and this is definitely in like the top three, top two even. Like it's so good and I will think about this book forever. I will reread this book again. I know for a fact I will because it just is so good. So if you're looking for a really sweet romance that's just sweet and the characters are so flippin likable there's no like bad communication in it and they're so supportive of each other like everything about this book is what I want in a romance so if anybody knows romances that are similar to this in vibe and similar to this in like support and like the couple are just good with each other and there's like no miscommunication or anything please tell me like I want more books just like this one like I'm on the search now so this was five stars like this was a gold star actually I put this on my gold star list so and if you didn't know don't know what this is about it's about a girl it's like a small town romance it's about a girl that moves to this little small lakeside town and she meets this guy and he's kind of like the town weirdo and he actually lost his voice so he can't talk and nobody like 
talks to him, nobody pays any attention to him, but because her dad um, was deaf, she knows sign language, and she kind of runs into this guy a couple of times, and she starts speaking sign language with him, and she starts realizing that he's really actually cool, and he's nice, and she starts, like, like giving him attention, because she kind of feels like he's just all alone, and he, she kind of feels bad for him, and then there's, like, this, like, romance that obviously kind of grows, and it's just so sweet. It's so sweet. Loved it. And then of course I read Travis. I feel like I've talked about this one in a wrap-up already, but like I don't think I have. But I think I maybe, I don't know, I don't know when I talked about this, but I feel like I've talked about it like a hundred times. But this was the second book to Archer's Voice. It was okay. I gave it three stars. Wasn't the best romance I've ever read. Like I didn't like Travis as a character in the first one. And so coming into this one I was like, I don't like him, so why would I like reading about his romance, like his love story? And I just didn't really love it. It was okay. Like it was kind of cute, but it wasn't anything spectacular. And the thing about it was, is like this wasn't the same Travis in the first book. Like it just wasn't. Like obviously it was like 10 years later or something, so he grew as a person, but like when you read that first book, you hate him. Literally you hate him. You're like, oh my god, this guy's horrible. So you read this one and you're like, okay, so like what, he's a good guy now? No, I don't believe it. <laughs> you know, probably didn't actually need to be written if I'm being honest, but maybe people wanted more in that world, which I could totally understand because Archer's voice is so good, but I just didn't really feel like we needed this because Travis is such an unlikable character and unless you completely change his character, like obviously you're not gonna like it, so, you know. So the next book was The Butterfly Garden, and this is by Dot Hutchinson, and I read this on audio, and this one was okay. Like, I actually really thought I was gonna like this one because this has gotten so many great reviews, and this wasn't a bad book at all. It was actually really interesting, and this is about a man who kidnaps girls, takes them into this, like, garden. He has, like, this beautiful garden of flowers and, like, trees. It's, like, this beautiful, enchanted-looking garden, and he makes these girls live in this garden with him, and he's a creepy guy, so he does, you know, creepy things with them, if you know what I'm saying. But he gives them everything that they want as far as, like, hobbies, and he feeds them, and, you know, takes really good care of them because he loves them. But the interesting thing about him is he tattoos butterfly wings on all of their backs, and all of their butterfly wings are different, and they're called, like, his butterflies. And it's kind of about um, their life in the butterfly garden and kind of like how they escape and all that kind of thing. It was really interesting. It was like an interesting premise and I liked um, kind of the creative aspect to a story like this. But I didn't think it was like life-changing. I didn't have like a lot of feelings toward it at the end. But it was okay. Like it was a decent read. I think I gave this three stars and I was hoping it was going to be a five star and I kind of was expecting maybe a five star but it wasn't one of those books where I'm like oh my gosh like this had such an impact on me. Um, but it was a cool read if you're looking for something kind of along those lines. But it is definitely on the darker side so just to be aware about that because you know there's darker subject matter in this book. So so the next book I read was One Little Mistake by Lucinda Berry and this was a free book on Audible and this one was like only, this was like a really short book. I think it's technically only like 30 pages. So it's a really short book, but I thought this sounded really interesting because it's about this girl who's just like a normal girl, like me, or you know, just a mom. And she drinks like a glass of wine, I think, and she gets pulled over and I think she has like her son in the back or something and she drinks one glass of wine and then something happens where she blacks out, but she gets in trouble because she has alcohol in her system and she's like I swear I just only had one glass of wine I was having like a bad day like you know it's like one of those situations where she made one little mistake but she's like it's weird that I blacked out I only had like one glass of wine like how did that happen and she's trying to figure out why she blacked out there has to be something more to this but you know it's just kind of one of those situations where you make one tiny little mistake as a just regular person who's a good person and what can happen if you make like one tiny little mistake and I thought that was really interesting pretty good plot line if you're looking for something that's really short like a quick quick audiobook to listen to while you clean for the day or something this is the perfect one because it is short and you can listen to it in one day um so that's pretty awesome as well it's definitely more of a psychological thriller so Lucy DeBerry definitely writes more psychological and in that regard it was pretty good I think I gave it four stars um it wasn't anything super super impactful because it was a short story but like I said if you're looking for something that you can read in one day while you're cleaning around the house 
else or working on a certain project this is the perfect one because it is short so all right guys so the next book I read was fourth wing as you guys know I did a whole vlog about this and I think that this book was really good there were some flaws I'm not gonna say that this was the best written book of all time this definitely had a very very YA feel but it's technically new adult like there is a pretty intense scandalous steamy scene in this book and so technically it's like new adult but the writing like the whole book to me felt extremely YA almost like young YA if you know what I'm saying so that was a little bit weird I feel like if this book was written in a more adult way I would have liked it a little bit more like Game of Thrones or something I don't know it just felt like young to me so that was I think one of the things that I didn't like the most about this and maybe why I ended up giving it four stars um, but overall I really liked the concept like I loved the flippin dragons I loved the threshing scene where they were like you know trying to get their dragons or whatever that was such a good scene there was just so many things about this book that was amazing but then there was also a few scenes that were really drawn out a little bit slow there were certain plot points in this novel that just were meandering so it had like pacing issues like some parts were really really good and they would slow way down and it would get really really good again and then slow way down but I loved the romance in this I loved the main kind of love interest in this book Zayden he was a great character and I also really liked the main character the main character was good as well I just think it's just a, such a good idea like the dragon rider thing and like how they get their own dragons and they can like talk to them in their head like such a fun idea like who doesn't want that you know? The next book I read was Persepolis. This is a graphic novel. I read this last month for my short book pick and I was really excited for this book. This is a book that I wanted to read for a really long time. Um, I'd always seen it around and I heard pretty good things about it and I hate giving like memoirs like low ratings because it's kind of like why are you rating my life story low? Like you know what I mean? It's not necessarily that I'm rating their life story low. It's that I'm rating the adaptation into a book low. So I just kind of felt like I wasn't that interested in this. It was kind of boring. There were certain parts where I'm like, okay, like some parts were really good and then other parts I'm just like, I don't know. It was just okay as far as like the life that she lived adapted into a book form, if that makes sense. So I did give it two stars, but not because I think her life is two stars. Just want to make that clear. The art was okay. Um, it's not my favorite art, I would say, but I do really like the cover. I think the cover is really pretty. It kind of has like a gothic vibe to it. So, so the last book that I read was Lisa Jules' None of This Is True, and this is a thriller. This is Lisa Jules' new book, and it comes out, I think, later this month. I think like July 20th or something like that. And this is the ARC copy. And I really love Lisa Jules' writing. I think that she's a really good writer and I want to read more books by her. I've read two now that she has read. Now the thing about this book, this is about a girl who has a podcast and she just has a regular great life with kids and a husband, a big house, and she's just living like that life that everyone wants to live, right? And she meets this girl Josie who starts listening to her podcast and Josie wants to be on her podcast and so she decides that she can talk the main character into getting her on her podcast and she does she says I'm trying to change my life and make my life better and I want you to document the process and in that process while they're filming this podcast um Josie like just entangles herself into the, this podcaster's life I can't remember what her name is uh Alex she kind of entangles herself into Alex's life and her family's life and she starts getting kind of obsessive and yeah it's just kind of weird and the girl Josie has like these two kids and one of the kids they're like both grown they're like grown adult women but one of them lives in her house with her and all she eats is like baby food like blended food and she like never leaves her room and you're like okay what like who is this girl and who is her daughter and why is she so weird and there's another daughter that she has that like left and like never talks to her mom ever again so you can tell Josie's kind of weird but you can't really figure out why she's weird and this book was really engaging from the second I picked it up like if you're looking for a book that's gonna make you just so invested and so focused on the story like you just want more and more and more and more this is definitely the book for you I felt like the entire time I was invested in the story. The way she reveals everything, it's like so perfectly paced and she gives you like these little nuggets like perfectly all throughout the story. So in that regard, I loved it. Like I was invested through the whole entire book. Um, I gave this book four stars. I'm gonna say it's like a 4.5. I think it was definitely really close to a five star. The only reason I didn't give it a five star is because it didn't have like one of those epic twisty twisty endings. Um, and I tend to give like thrillers five stars if they have like epic epic endings or they're just super super su suspenseful now this book ending was great like it was a great ending but um 
it just wasn't a quite quite a five star book you know what I mean but I would definitely recommend it if you do like psychological thrillers and if you like kind of like weird people because there were times in this where I was creeped out and it's hard for me to get creeped out but literally Josie as a character creeped me out and I don't know if it was the way that I was picturing her in my head. I was picturing her like that one tall girl from Sex Education. If you guys have watched that show, she was like the tall alien girl. That's how I pictured Josie in this. And I think it was picturing her like that. And then some of the weird things that she was doing, like she was creeping me out in my head. And if a book can kind of creep me out to a certain degree, then I have to give it a decent rating because it's hard to creep me out. It really is. So I think this book is great. Highly recommend it if you're looking for a good psychological thriller that's going to keep you invested. Um, it was really good. All right, so that is it, you guys, for my wrap up. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope I was able to kind of talk about these book books quickly, but kind of give you enough information to, you know, help you decide if you want to read them or not. Let me know if you have any questions down below, and I'll be happy to answer anything. And I will see you guys in my next video. I also wanted to start a new series called Read This If. And basically every like week or two weeks or three weeks, whatever, I will upload a video titled Read This If, you know, you are a parent or if you like psychology or just whatever, you know, read this if. And I want you guys to comment down below some ideas for that series, like read this if you like or read this if you are interested in. Does that make sense? And I will film videos kind of relating to those ideas. So let me know in the comments below like what you'd like to see for that series. And I think that's it, you guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.